Welcome, Welcome back. So we actually have Kibler and Thais ready to start their games. Uh, we are back. Sorry for the delay, guys. We apologize for the inconvenience. We didn't mean to start, you know, rambling on and on. But now we're ready to go. Kibler is online. Thais is online. We have their uh, we have visual on them with their webcams, and we should be starting fairly soon. So we just need the classes from the players to be able to figure out exactly what they're going to be bringing. I did mention Kibler liked his um, you know druid mage hunter, but I don't know if that's what he's going to bring around this time. All right, so it looks like we have the lineups for the players right now, and Kibler will be bringing hunter, druid, and priest. Meanwhile, Thais will be bringing, be bringing warlock, mage, and warrior. So, Kibler bringing Druid, not surprising to me. Bringing Priest, also not surprising because uh, when he first came onto the scene, he was mainly known as a Priest player, and he really innovated, uh, he really innovated Undertaker Priest, uh, essentially. Yeah, with the whole death rattle mechanic where he tried to make it more aggressive. He, basically, what he tried to do is turn Priest into a beatdown deck. Um, without going full on aggro with the double mind blast and, and, and whatnot, just yeah, straight up beatdown. So Undertaker Priest was one of his first forays, I guess, into the innovation of the Priest class. And it did, you know, really uh, pick up in success for a while. A lot of people were trying it out. Although it did, it died off at some point. So uh, it was an archetype that was kind of novel. But as you said, you know, that's his foray into the, the scene. And bringing it, though, I'm not sure what type of priest this is going to be. This is likely going to be a control heavy priest. Like we've seen a lot of recently, I haven't, or the OTK priest. He's also playing a weird version of uh, Shadow Boxer, right? With the Shadow yeah. Boxer. I know he uh, really has been favoring the Chinese priest list with the the Death Lords, the Light Bombs, you name it, with the villains chosen. Yeah. And we might see that from him. Uh, meanwhile, Tice is going to be running Warlock, Mage, and Warrior. Um, two of his classes aren't surprising to me. I know Tice really likes Demon Handlock, um, so and he also really likes mech mage so uh but the the really surprising class is warrior i know tice really doesn't like warrior in this meta game so i'm wondering if that's a decision to try to counter kibler and you think it's a um i mean i don't think it counters it counters hunter all right it does pretty well against priest also if built properly uh generally speaking those come down to the thought steals i don't want to be you know um really boring about that but a lot of the time the thought steals in a control matchup in any control matchup are really really crucial to determining who's going to take the game so those matchups are generally a coin flip depending on how the players build their deck but druid is slightly favored against warrior to say the very least so maybe thighs built his lineup to counter kibblers um, but I can't really say so based on the Warlock and the Mage. I'm not sure what those are meant to be uh, countering. I yeah, guess, so like, Handlock does lose to Hunter, but Priest, uh, and wins against Priest, so... So, um, so the, we have the first matchup, it's actually gonna be Warrior versus Priest. Okay. And this matchup is very interesting, because very famously, Amaz and Firebat had a debate on stream about wh who was favored in this matchup at the VA Game House Cup, and pretty much the entire cast was them, like, uh, arguing with each other about who was favored. Um, yeah, KitKat it, says, you know, Kit, and I remember he was talking to KitKat a while back, you know, he said, I never lose against Breeze, or something along those lines, whereby, you know, Warrior is hugely favored. And maybe that's Firebat's position as well. And Amaz was like, no, 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 Priest is hugely favored. But that might come down to playstyle, right? Yeah. Uh, I also think it like depends with uh, the era he's talking about. Because I know Amaz, right. at one point, he agreed that Warrior was extremely favored. And it was only recently that he switched around his position that Priest was favored in the matchup. Yeah, so it's, it might just be, uh, you know, due to the fact that the metagame changed a lot, new cards were implemented. I like Light Bomb against Warriors, though. Sometimes you can get yourself some decent board clears. Shield Maiden is especially annoying. You don't want to waste a Shadow or Death on her, so if you can get yourself a decent Light Bomb with her on the board, it can be uh, pretty beneficial. Yeah, if you run, like, two Light Bombs, two Shadow or Deaths, and a Mind Control, that's just so huge. You can pretty much deal with any Warrior threat, and you can just play out the Warrior one for one, even with bad Thought Steals. Yep. All right. Well, we're looking at No Shark Cleric with Power Shield. There is a mind control in Kibler's hand, so that's going to come in very handy uh, later in the game. Yeah, this North Shark is also going to be really handy. And wow, even a Thought Steal, like a really great start from Kibler. Yeah, the weapon is very important for Thais, though. I think the weapons are the most important cards to have in this matchup. To be able to take out mid, like, you know, early game to mid game minions with your weapons. And this Death Lord, oh wow. Yeah, so Tysi, uh, he played down the Armorsmith on turn oh, two, and yeah. usually you don't want to give your opponent extra draws, but I think what Tysi is saying that he really needs, uh, 
he really needs his armor synth to do that one extra damage so his death spike can kill the Northshire cleric. Yeah, Kibler's got like if he if Kibler attacks the armor smith and draws off of this, then Thais is forced to coin out death spite, which is not too bad since Kibler can always follow up with something else and just uh, benefit from the card draw. All right, he doesn't go for the healing play. Instead, he picks up shield maiden and shield block. Wow. Okay. Well, that's uh. That's not not the best, I would say, but they are. One of them is a cycling card. One of them is um, it's essentially a 5-5. Five, five. They are actually, armor for the priest is actually somewhat valuable in this matchup because oftentimes when the warrior wins, it's because they get an Alexstrasza off and then pretty much burst the priest down when the priest can't heal and they can't put up any taunts. So yeah. if the priest has armor, then Alexstrasza is going to be a lot worse. Yeah, which actually, like, obviously that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for many more power cards than Shield Block and Shield Maiden. Um, you'd like to find yourself a Dr. Boom, for instance, right? Or even a Sludge Belcher is very often considered better. But, you know, you, you mentioned the Alex draws a point, and this is the one-two punch of Warrior in control matchups. That's what they want to go. Get Alex and then OTK you with Grom Hellscream. Yeah. Killer oh. is just pl playing this nice and slow. He can't really put the, the Death Lord on the field because if Tice kills the Death Lord and something like a Rag comes out, then it's going to be impossible for Kibler to deal with. So he'd rather play the Death Lords at a later point in time when he can light bomb the threats away on the very next turn. So I wouldn't be surprised to see... Uh, if he didn't have a Sludge Belcher, I guess, in his hand, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Death Lord. And even with the Sludge Belcher, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Death Lord because um, the Sludge Belcher just trades too poorly against the Death Spike. Yeah, especially with the armor smith on the board, he'll get another point, uh, another few points of armor on the warrior. It's not that big of a deal, but he can wait one turn and get himself a Cabal Shadow Priest if he wants to later on. Um, it's really not. I, I feel like they, both of these players can afford playing slowly, and Thice has a Black Knight. That's good against Death Lord. Oh, yeah. That's a That's, crazy uh, card here for Thice. Maybe even understatement. <laughs> um, the best quality about. Black Knight in this matchup actually is that it has more health than it's it has attack. Attack, yeah. <laughs> so it'll survive those dark bombs. Yeah, those dark bombs. Priest has gone shadow form. Oh man. So what I'm curious about though is, like, if you all, if you even play Black Knight right away on Death Lord, or if it's not necessarily worth it. I mean, what what other value are you gonna get in that matchup, right? Like Sludge Belcher, one of them's already gone. What are the odds of you getting anything better? than a Death Lord if it does show up. really like that attack, by the way. A lot of, uh, I've been watching a lot of streams and a lot of players are beginning to play around Cabal, Shadow Priest a lot more, just getting their minions that can be stolen by Cabal really weak. To the point where they're just easy to kill. Exactly. Are we gonna see a Black Knight on the slime? <laughs> 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 the value. So here's one thing in this in this position is you've got to be considering the priest's uh, lines of play. You know, Holy Nova never gives value, so double cruel task is never an option. You need it later on to play Grom to play into Grom Hellscream for sure, and you can get some decent mid game uptrades with those minions. Oh yeah, that's true. So I'm thinking maybe a Sylvanas here just to make the board a lot more awkward. Yeah, I think I like that. That or you thought steal and you wait a little bit. But yeah, I would tend to agree with you. Playing it. Uh... Oh yeah, I like Thought Steel as well. It's also a very good play. I think uh, it's a pretty good turn to do it because you have no pressure coming up. Whereas, so, oh, oh wow. goodness. So that's actually it's uh it's both really good uh, for really now bad. because weapons are so good in this matchup, but it can also backfire if your opponent has a Harrison Jones, for example. And yeah. a lot of times, that's a conundrum you face when you're playing um, when you're playing a warrior against priests. Like you play your Harrison Jones as a vanilla five four, but then they thought steal a weapon. Yeah, and then you wonder what the hell has happened to me. Although I wonder if Thais is uh, playing those Harrison Jones in his deck, depending on what he pinned Kibler on, right? Because if you know Kibler is not necessarily going to bring weapon classes, how relevant are those? So that's actually one of the best possible, like one of the best Death Lord uh, minions that Tice could have gotten off of Death Lord, because it's not weak to, uh, it's not weak to Light Bomb. Light Bomb, yeah, and it also it, draws it, you more cards if it does hit. It's it's even better. Exactly, it it is weak to Cabal Shadow Priest, but we know from Kibler's hand that he doesn't have it. 
You know, I really like the fiery war axe and like in the death bite here in Kibble, that gives us so many options for the mid game. So surprisingly, one of the key cards in uh, Kibler's deck is anti killbot against warrior because even though warrior is not an aggressive matchup it's just so good this anti killbot is so good when you want to heal up after an alexstrasza um like i said before it typically the warrior wins by alexstrasing you and bursting you down when you don't have a heal or a taunt and the most common ways for a priest to heal after an alexstrasza besides their hero power are things like holy fire and uh and Light of the Naru, but the problem with those cards is that they're more situational, whereas after something like an Alexstrasza, you're always going to be able to play the anti heal bot. It heals so much, plus it uh, puts a body on the board, and it's not like, you don't have to like holy fire your opponent's face, for example, which you yeah. do have sometimes. You you do have to do that quite often if you can't kill the Alex, or Shadow Word Death, then you know, holy fire face uh, very frequently. So we'll have to see exactly what happens, but this Cruel Taskmaster, although it gives a card draw, Tithice is going to put it, you know, put the Acolyte of Pain in Light Bomb range, and with that weapon, if at all, uh, okay, well, never mind. Tithice is going to decide to just trade into the Shield Maiden with the weapon instead of waiting any longer. So I want to point out that the Priest is more armored than the Warrior right now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it makes event. sense. That should be an achievement in Hearthstone. You know, when you get a when you get a weapon, like kill a hundred minions with weapons, and then you unlock yourself some custom emote. They, should, well, they need um, they need more achievements in Hearthstone. I feel that would be really great. They I need think, an actual achievement system. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like one of those players who like, I have the personality where like if I'm a completionist basically. Okay. And I have to get all those achievements if they're available to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I if I'm telling you, you know, you have to uh, heal the the enemy's face for a thousand points of health as a priest. Would you do it? If I give you red healing hero power that's all you get that's your reward because like a custom color on your hero power yeah, yeah i would do it <laughs> a thousand oh man you're a masochist like i would never do that all right so he's gonna get the alex Straza on curve at nine go to the priest the armor is all gone now the heal bot can be played and probably will have to be played in fact if i venture to say anything about this um otherwise he's got to be afraid of the grom right i think he just shadow word death and anti heal bot to be honest though, are you actually afraid of the Grom? Because, uh, not on the next turn, right? Because you actually have two armor. If you didn't do this play, you could actually be out of range of the Grom. It's really funny. Yeah, you'd be just out of range. You you don't even actually technically have to heal yourself this turn. Right. right. Yeah. Kibler just goes for the very safe play. Well, that's probably gonna get mind controlled. Ah, uh, yeah. Just, just the, a guess here. Yeah, probably actually the best minion to mind control, short of, uh... Maybe a Sylvanas? No, I think it is arguably... I mean, honestly, if Thais, if Thais, if Kibler finds a Shadow or Death for his own Sylvanas to steal the other Sylvanas, this could be terribly uh, difficult with Thais. So actually, well, I, I want to talk about the history of this deck, um, the Priest deck. Yeah. Because it's really funny how the history of this deck and Thais are involved. So this Priest deck is a Chinese Priest deck. And it originates from China. When I was in China with Tice, I discovered this priest deck when I was uh, preparing for the tournament, preparing to cast that tournament. And I showed Tice, and he was like, wow, this is uh, much worse than Control Priest. I was like, really? So I gave a deck list to Savitz, and he played it on ladder. And that's why <laughs> this, deck, this deck became popular. So Tice is very intimately familiar with this deck, and he knows and, pretty much every card in and out. And he doesn't like it nearly as much as the usual list? Exactly. So. If, uh, if Tice loses this match, uh, he'll have to eat his words, I think. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not looking too bad for him in this position. I feel like it's okay. The Light Bomb could change things, but already one of them has been played. So, at this point, t um, Kibler does slightly have to play around, uh, the, the OTK, the right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I say OTK, but it's not really that OTK. It's more of a uh, kill you over the game than finish you off with Grom Hellscream. Yeah, exactly. Like, if he just plays Sylvanas and heals up, he's actually, uh, his opponent would have exact lethal with that combo if he draws Grom on the next turn. Yeah. Well, with Cruel Taskmaster, that's, you know, 14 damage straight up, so. Uh, that's a lot of damage right there. So, sh Shadow Boxer. Uh, this is the one card that. The one card that uh, that
that Kibler has changed in the original list. He took out Giblin Stalker and added in Shadow Boxer. Yeah, I think the, the the key reason for this is because the biggest, you know, blind spot of Priest in general is their lack of two drops. They have absolutely none. If they had a two drop, you know, they'd probably be doing much better than they are right now because they tend to be like you mentioned Giblin Stalker. That's kind of the two drop that Chinese priest plays. Giblin Stalker, but Shadow Boxer is an alternative. But we still don't have this go to two drop that every priest will agree is what you play. Um, like the equivalent of a priest, I guess, a, a two drop for like Injured Blade Master or something along those lines, or Dark Cultist. We still don't have that for priests. Yeah, priests need a uh, of the Flame for two mana. That'd be yeah, players. that is exactly what they need. I, I'm really glad that Tice decided not to play the Sylvanas because he would just get wrecked right here by the, the Light Bomb. Yeah, the overextension would have cost him quite a bit. Uh, wow, Doomsayer from Tice. This is kind of a Tice special. He really likes Doomsayer in Warrior, and it's mainly teched in against uh, against Mech Mage, actually. And yeah, because, Lumer Entity. Yeah, this actually might be why Tice is actually bringing this Warrior deck. Here, it's and it's because of uh, he knows Kibler will most likely bring Mech Mage against Mirror Entity. It's just like the best card you could possibly have. Wow, and that one ping from Shadow Boxer. I think that's exactly what Kibler wanted here. That one armor removal. That was incredible. Yeah, really amazing. I, I mean, it might matter, but probably not because there's so much pressure from Tice uh, right now against Kibler. He needs to draw a Shadow Word Death. Unfortunately, that's not it. Actually, the, the, wait, Velen's Chosen plus Holy Nova, does that do anything? Actually, it's enough to kill Dr. Boom with your Shadow Boxer. Yeah, it's slightly inefficient though, to say the least. <laughs> you mean Dr. Boom? Is there ever a way to deal with Dr. Boom efficiently? I, I'm still looking for one, by the way. You can, uh... Two for one. Like, you, the best answer is probably two for one. You can actually do this and shrink Meister the Dr. Boom, so... The Doctor Boom doesn't automatically kill the Shadow right, Boxer. Right, right. And if the if the R, if our Jesus is in your favor, then there's a possibility that uh. What if what if Boom Bots kill the Shadow Boxer? I what mean, if? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, always possible. But no, no, it didn't. All right. I'm always disappointed when I see the green around the minion. So you know what? This that the Shrink Meister would be whoa. Oh, he's playing around Grom Hellscream. Okay. Alright, so he's playing around the OTK, which I can't blame him for, but it would have given him such a board, actually, if he'd kept yeah, the... Yeah, he, he was playing six. around it in future turns, so he wants to mm -hmm. heal up every single turn. I'm not yep. sure if I agree with that, though. Like, like you're going to be pressured like every single turn from now on, so it's actually going to be pretty frightening for you. Yeah, either way, the moment the warrior gets the initiative, that two health doesn't matter. As soon as you put down a minion, uh, the only minion that would help in this position would be Sludge Belcher, I guess. That's the only thing that makes this heal justifiable over just keeping your 4-6 uh, alive, but Killer thinks otherwise. He's got a Death Spite. That doesn't accomplish much. Yeah, the issue with Death Spite here is do you actually attack face or attack Sylvanas? So if yeah, he goes face. for face now, then Sludge Belcher kind of punishes him. Because he By the be, light! He won't be able to kill uh, Sylvanas on the next turn. Alright, so let's see what Thais does here. He's got a shield slam at the ready if he wants to kill that pilot shredder at all. Thais oh. has... Thais has seen both uh, light bombs. So I don't think he's too afraid of committing to the board or over committing to the board at this point. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, Alkenai's Soul Priest Circle is just not a thing here. Yeah, it's not in this deck. Exactly. Well, we shall see what Shield Slam brings. So he attacked face to avoid getting stuck behind a two. Uh, oh, wow. Well, that's a, that's a horrible minion. But he's going to keep the Cool Taskmaster for later use. I mean, that Death Bite is going to kill the Owl anyway. So it doesn't really matter for... Uh, but Thais. Yeah, he had to he had to kill that pilot shredder or the trade would have been too good uh, for the pilot shredder into shield maiden and then uh, Death Spite would pretty much clear the board. Yep. I think uh, Kibler is 
on his last rope where Thais just needs that one Grom is the one top deck that rules them all and that would just take the game right away. But Thais can't seem to dig fast enough to find it. Yeah, he can't have uh he can't have too many cards in his deck and unfortunately like most of the cards in his hand are pretty much unplayable. Yeah, uh, most Brawl. of them are gonna do nothing. You're probably not gonna get too much value from Brawl. Execute is not too good here. Doomsayer and Armor Smith, you'll probably never be able to play because they're for Armorsmith you're afraid of a second Cabal Shadow Priest and for Doomsayer I mean you're kind of I, I don't mind Armorsmith but I, I mind the other ones yeah like Armorsmith I can somewhat agree with playing but the uh, <laughs> the Brawl and Doomsayer oh wow is that useful at all actually it might just be it just uh you mainly would play it just to put more minions on the board, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't... The thing is, he can't really afford to do... Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter much in this case, because he's already, you know, going to be mana-saturated, but... It could have mattered. I might have liked, uh, actually... Healing the, um... What's it called? Healing the, the shield The shredder... Maiden. The shield maiden to steal the health, and then... To, to draw the card? Yep. Uh, that's oh, a yeah. good well, game. Yeah, that's lethal. And a little really unfortunate for Kibler. Tice played that really well. He put enough pressure on the board every single turn to bait out the light bombs. And after yeah. Kibler used his light bombs, he pretty much didn't have anything else. He also, he didn't have a lot of card draw uh, mechanics. Like, instead of, um, instead of going for the card draw on turn 3, for example, he went for the thought steal. And perhaps that was a mistake because he really didn't, didn't get any drawing power or drawing potential from the Northshire Cleric. Yeah, also, but the thoughts are so important though for the exactly. first matchup, right? As soon as you get something great, and the earlier you do it, the more easy it is for you to plan your game, you know, much farther ahead, which makes the whole purpose of thoughts still, you know, the moment you find an empty turn to do it in control matchups, you do it so that your future turns can be planned out much more effectively. Yeah, to be fair, like to to Kibler, like his thought steals weren't really that good. I would have to say they they're in like Mediocre, the 20th, yeah. 20th to 30th percentile. Shield block, one of the worst ones. Shield maiden, it's okay, I guess, but uh, Kibler unfortunately didn't get too much value out of it. Yeah, and the the weapons did come in handy, but not nearly you know as good as getting perhaps a huge threat. So next match is gonna be Thais's mage versus Kibler's priest. So Thais's warrior is now out of the the way because he's it's a conquest format, and as a result he can't replay the deck. Kibler is gonna stick to his priest, going against uh, up against a mage. If it is freeze mage, um, you know this is a pretty good matchup for the mage in general. Kind of like playing against paladin. I think generally speaking, mages are fairly favored. Uh, especially against Dragon Priest, where, I mean, against Chinese Priest, as you say, where there's very little there that Freeze Mage can't handle. Um, there's no huge amount of pressure that's coming out of it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I mean, they do have some healing in the form of the Antique Heal Bot, but usually it's not enough. If an Emperor comes down, followed up by Archmage Antoninus into, like, drawing four fireballs, mm -hmm. it probably doesn't help. But I would suspect that Tice is playing Mech Mage. But no, it's actually, you're right, it's going to be Freeze Mage. Yeah, I, I, Thais is a player who, uh, you know, the, the one deck that I think is very predictable with Thais, that would be the only deck is Phase Hunter, um, because it doesn't play mid range that much. But as far as the the mage decks, I think Freeze Mage is one of the archetypes that I generally pin him on more often than not. But we'll have to see. I love Freeze Mage, man. It's one of my favorite decks. It's so because there is no one Freeze Mage playstyle, right? You look at Handlock, for instance. At every turn, there are multiple lines of play. But only one of them is correct. Whereas I feel in Freeze Mage, there are multiple lines of play, but multiple lines of play are correct. Because you're playing with the, your entire deck in mind, as opposed to just the, the cards that you have on hand. I really do like that deck for that. Yep. Yeah, just putting, much, uh, putting on as much power as possible on the board. And I think at this point, Kibler... He probably knows that this is not Mech Mage, Mech Mage, especially with the Blood Mage Shadows coming on the board. Yeah, I think that's a complete... Uh, that just tells you what it is. Well, Death Lord, if that brings out an Alex Straza, that's always a big problem for the Mage. Whenever that pops out of menu, you don't want to see early. And this is one of the things that I'm always worried about when I play Freeze Mage against Priest who plays Death Lord. Uh, is if that brings out Alex, I am done for. I have no way to kill him. Yeah. We already see, like... 
some of the uh, really important cards in uh, in Tice's hand right now against Priest, and they are uh, Doom Doomsayer because Priest, especially this list, it has no way to deal with Doomsayer, and also um, also Emperor Thorazin, which will be able to reduce all these cards so that like it's possible to get really huge Antonidas turns with like Frost Nova, uh, Frost Bolt, uh, Ice Lance. Yeah, it's one of the biggest. That's the the thing is you want to time it perfectly, right? You don't want, you want to make sure that when you end up playing the Emperor, uh, it's gonna get you at least two damage six spells lower in cost at the very least, and uh, possibly the Ice Lances. Those are very important for zero mana. Those are gonna be the bread and butter of your damage. Yeah. So, uh, Tice has like one part of the combo of Doomsayer, but he doesn't have the other part, which is uh, either a Frost Nova or any kind of freeze in his deck. So he just throws both of them on the boards, and this can go really well or really poorly for Kibler, depending on if Kibler can clear the board. Let's see if he can. Um, so four, two, I believe that's just barely not enough damage to uh, do so, even with the Holy Nova. So Kibler will actually... We'll probably have to go for a thought steal here, unfortunately, and everything on this board will just die, giving Tice, um, giving Tice pretty much all the options and giving him a minion as well. Yeah, the thing, the problem with this is that if Alex Strasla comes out again, that's always a big issue. If there's a Shadow Word Death to counter it, then you know what do you do? Yeah, it, like if Alex Strasla comes down, sure, the Alex Strasla effect doesn't come on the field. Uh -oh. Wow, wow, that's actually really huge. He gets his own Alex Strasla, and it might be. It's just another form of healing into the game. The problem is, um, for Freeze Mage, bursting down Alex Straza, bursting down 15 points of health that the Alexstrasza will give you, um, oftentimes, th that's not too much of an issue. They do have the Frost Balls, the Ice Lance. Oh, and the oh. Alex comes out of the Death Lord, and Thais is just face palming the worst outcome. Then again, we have to point out, we had seen two Mad Scientists, one Acolyte of Pain, the Emperor Thorazin, and we'd already seen the uh, two Doomsayers, so a lot of his minions were already, you know, seen in his hand. So the only outs that were left in there, maybe a Loot Hoarder, perhaps another uh, Acolyte of Pain, uh, and Archmage Antonidas, so effectively three minions at the very most. Okay, so yeah, oh, like, if Archmage Antonidas came out, it would've been game over, but yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. probably, like, it's actually not too bad because, uh, Kibler doesn't have a Shadow Word Death, surprisingly, so he can't actually deal with the Alexstrasza. He's probably going to go for uh, 8 to face. That being yeah, said, he... this Ice Barrier will actually become fairly relevant. It's kind of funny that way. <laughs> it's going to mitigate the minion you just put out. Kibler is usually happy to get this Alex out, but this is a circumstance where... I think this may be the only circumstance where you're unhappy to see it, because you have no real answer. Yeah, you no, man. I actually just have to play Sledge Belcher here. Do you just really train funny. to Mad Scientist, then Belcher? How, how do you like, you know, train to Mad Scientist, then go Death Lord Cultist? Uh, the pro the issue I have with Death Lord is, uh, you might just give your opponent the Antonidas. Uh, the Antonidas is the only card left. Okay, yeah, never mind. You can't do well, that. Not without. In, uh, in most board typical wise. freeze lists, the minions left in the deck are the, the Loot Hoarder, which he just drew. Yeah. Um, and um, did he play an Acolyte yet? He, he has one Acolyte in hand, he hasn't played another one, so that okay. might be the second card. So, Loot Hoarder, Acolyte, Archmage, at status, and most lists, they run one heal bot these days. Okay, yeah. That's like a flex card that you have in Freeze Mage, so yep. a lot of people end up swapping it in and out. But, interestingly enough, if there was a Light Bomb in Kibler's hand, like Shadow War Death or Light Bomb would solve the problem. Yeah, it's really actually really unlucky for Kibler that he has these four cards in his deck that deals with them. But out of like the eight cards he has in his hand, none of them are Light Bomb or uh, or Shadow or Death. And wow, he still wow. doesn't draw it. This is really unfortunate for Kibler. I think the play is to play Northshire. You heal the Mad Scientist, and then you see what you find because you need to draw that deck. Maybe you go for the Nova. I don't know. I'm just. It, it might be getting to the point where Kibler has to do desperation plays, like you were saying. Yeah, I, I just feel like, at this point... There's very little you can do. I guess Death Lord into Coin Nova, but that's... Death Lord, Death Lord can go so poorly here. Yeah, it's so terrible. It's gotten even worse now that Loot Hoarder's come out. Oh man. So I would say that actually at this point, because we assessed like the minions in uh, Tice's deck, 
it's probably going to be something like a 1 in 4 for Arch Archmage Antonius to come out of the Seth Lord. Possibly even better than that, yeah. Oh man. Well, good luck, Kibler. You will need it. So, Flame Strike into trade. I mean, I. Actually, do you even Flame Strike or just trade your entire board away? Because you do get the card draw, which means the Emperor Thorson gets even better. Yeah, I like uh, trading away the Mad Scientist first to get the secret out, then trading away the Loot Hoarder. Uh, yep. Then see what you draw, maybe reconsider, then trading away your Alex Straza. Yeah, so the, the secret on board is Ice Block. You know, the Ice Bear is, you know, shining green, so yeah. that's a guaranteed you, block. You could even consider trading in the Alex Straza before the Loot Hoarder, maybe to, I don't know, give your chances of uh, getting high to nice more. And it's actually oh, okay, he has two hoarders. Order. All right. So yeah, that's usually the flex spot. If usually when he plays loot, when you play two loot hoarders, that means you don't play uh, anti kill bot. Anti kill bot. Yep. Yes. Definitely not. So well, it's usually maybe, but... the biggest variation between freeze mage list these days is that one spot where you either play a second loot hoarder, an explosive sheep, or an anti kill bot. Man, I can't believe Thais has gotten away with getting that Alex off the Death Lord. This is a one in a thousand chances. Like, this is incredible because usually you get punished so severely for getting it. It's the one thing you'd never want to see come out. And might that be lethal? I don't think it's possible it's lethal just because of, uh, like, the secret is either an yeah. ice barrier or an ice block. Oh, so uh, it is ice barrier, yeah. Yeah, you're not going to have enough. So, uh, RK Intellect drawing more cards into Emperor Thorazan looks pretty insane at this moment. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that's probably going to be a good game scenario at that point. The Kibler needs to find nothing but eyes, like Light Bomb. I can't even think of another card that he wants to see here. <laughs> How has he drawn so poorly? <laughs> oh, wow. Kibler, I, we apologize. Yeah, I honestly cannot believe this at this moment. This is yeah. This should not be going like after the the, the Death Lord got Alex out. I expected this game to go to Kibler's very simply, but well. Yeah, you you even saw the reaction in Tice's face. He was like, "Oh no, I got Alex Straza from from this Death Lord. This yeah, is so this is horrible the worst. for me." <laughs> exactly. And then all of a sudden, Alex Straza goes, "Well, I bring like I bring life," and and she just you know shrieks away at Kibler's face for a few yeah. turns. Yeah, Tyson's reaction was like very fair. Like usually when Alex Straza comes out, it's actually bad because you don't use the you won't be able to do, use the Alex Straza to deal 15 H uh, attack to your yeah. opponent, deal 15 points of damage directly to your opponent's face. Well, she dealt like what 24 now, <laughs> like total yeah. damage. Uh, like if you include the Death Lord that died from it, that's a uh, that's a much better Alex than you get from your hand. For the face, for the face. Yeah. For the face. Well, that's game. Um, wow, incredible here, Kibler. I, uh, I mean, I don't know if how Th if Thais realizes how lucky he got off of that um, Death Lord in the end. But I think he does. You know, his reaction to the initial outcome of the Death Lord was a huge um, desperation face bomb. You saw it in his face. He wasn't happy to see it. So ultimately, he must be pretty glad that there was no answer to Alex. So that's going to be two zero for Thais, I believe, at this point. Yeah, two for Tyson. It's looking really, really bad for Kibler because the last deck from Tyson is Warlock, and we all know Tyson is really favoring the Demon Handlock and the Handlock. Yeah. So just like pretty much the worst matchup in the game for Priest. Priest has really no. Well, way double to deal light with that. bomb though. It's 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 gotten much better, right? Isn't it? Um, it's gotten better, I would say, but the problem is uh, you still lacking the card draw. Uh, mechanics in Priest. Uh, right. Like you do have the North Shires and the Thought Steals and the and the uh, po Power Word Shields, but they just don't really compare to the Warlock Hero Power. Um, we actually yeah. are going to see Tice playing Warlock, of course, and Kibler will be bringing his Druids in the next match. Because this is a League format, players will be playing, will be aiming to get the most number of games, uh, win the most number of games in addition to winning the match overall. So Kibler, he knows Tice will be probably playing. Um, Handlock, so he's bringing the deck in his lineup that's most favored against Handlock, which is yeah. going to be the Druid. 
Yeah, there's no, there's no reason not to play that. I mean, you want to get your tiebreaker score as high as possible, at the very least, uh, to be able to perhaps, as, as we said, you know, he's played the least amount of matches so far in the KPL. So if he does get a huge win streak to the very end, he could get himself in the top five. So, I, I mean, if he gets the tiebreaker and somehow squeezes a win at the very end, that's definitely possible. And are we actually uh, looking at this? I mean, due to the flame? Yeah, due to the flame, it's... Uh... It's a new card, I will say, in uh, in Druid, but yeah. most people, they don't like this card. Orange used this card in his Seed Story deck lists and to win Seed Story, but after the tournament, he actually said, no, this card is just bad. Like, It doesn't work, right? The way yeah, I want it to. It's just inferior to Shades overall. Yeah, that's how it feels when I played it. I've played around with it quite a bit because I feel like it's so good against aggro that it increases your matchup tremendously. The problem is the downside of playing versus mid-range or control just lowers your win rate drastically as a result of playing it. Yeah, so um, so the first turn play, Kibler could have innervated out um, a Druid of the Flame, and he didn't because he knew Tice was more likely than not to be uh, a handlock player. So against yeah. you, of course you innervate out the Druid of the Flame, but this is certainly the correct decision in holding the flame as, um, Druid of the Flame as much as possible. I, I want agree. to say that Kibler's hand is actually really good at this point. Um, yeah, this uh, play, Keeper the Grove with the... Yeah, not only out. the Keeper, but I feel like Azure Drake is actually one of the most important cards against Handlock. You pretty much want to cy be cycling all the time in order to keep up with the Warlock hero power. Yeah, well, there's going to be a Mountain Giant coming out next turn, or a Twilight Drake. I suspect Mountain just because there's less answers to an 8-8 in the Druid's deck than there are to... Uh, silenceable Twilight Drake. Yeah, we'll have also, to see what Dyes decides to do. Also, the fact that if you Twilight Drake and your opponent does have a Keeper, then the Druid of the Flame trades into the Twilight Drake. Yeah. Well, we see the Mountain Giant here. Yeah. You know, I wonder how often a 5-2 is going to be seen out of that uh, Mountain Druid of the Flame. I've played it against Priest as a 5-2 early in the game, and it's actually very effective. Since most players are cutting out Holy Smites nowadays, you, you see very few of those, so it tends to be most effective in those circumstances. And I see a Blackwing Technician in Kibler's deck. Oh my goodness, has he really brought dragons to this tournament? Uh, maybe uh, maybe a week too early, possibly. But wow, this might just be, yeah, his dragon uh, his dragon druid. With, and it tops out uh, like Ysera, Deathwing, um, Alexstrasza. Just really exciting, really great deck to watch. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't backfire too much because Tyson's board is looking grandiose. Oh man, there's no BGH right now for Kibler. Yeah, just uh, peeling off some of that armor, making sure this uh, this druid can't shield slam down these giants, of course. The Sunfree Protector is an especially interesting card here. I'm liking it. It's going to allow him to contest, well not contest, but stop some of the beatdown from that 8-8, theoretically. It's also uh, it's also indicative of a dragon deck. Yeah, because if very. Because you play these big dragons, like you do feel like you have to turn them up in order to survive. Yeah, I think what's going to end up happening though is that Kibler is going to be forced to innervate out Defender of Argus to trade into the. Uh... Oh man, this is. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe you can't do that. Yeah. Exactly. So this is, uh, it's okay, but yeah, it, pretty much Druid is going to be on the back foot all the time, and there's an 8-8, eight, eight, going to be doing 8 damage to the face every single turn. Yeah, and this is going to just be a matter of time before Thais finds the end of damage to go through. Thais is, uh, I have to say that Thais is drawn really well here, getting both his Twilight Drakes and his Mountain Giant, three out of the four big threats that you can get in the early stages of the game. Yeah. So if there's a Savage Orn Kibler's deck though, this could be this could be a situation where he's able to get the win because of the Force of Nature War, uh, if at all. I'm curious to know if there's a possibility of that. I mean, Hellfire Dark Bomb is going to wipe out a portion of the board, but not everything. Um, pretty much, I have to say that yeah. Kibler actually needs to taunt right now. Right. Yeah, he needs to taunt, or it's going to be game over in effect. Yeah. I don't see any way out of that. Yeah, two dark bombs in Tyson's hand, plus the mountain giant that's almost certainly going to survive his turn. Yeah. 
and uh, mo more likely than not, Kibler will actually be taking two damage or four damage to the face by uh, attacking into the Twilight Drake. Yeah, he's he's gonna take two, uh, two, four to the face. So he actually, oh, actually, how do you like Blackwing Tech okay. into Innervate Sun Fury instead? Yeah, okay, that I way do you don't like take the damage. I do like that, especially because I can see both players' hands, and I can see that uh, if he didn't do this play, he would have just died. The question is whether or not he's still dead, because you look at Hellfire, right? You attack him with the 3-5 with the 2-1, you Hellfire, then you Dark Bomb the 2-4, you go face for 8. The opponent's on 2 health, so I guess you're pretty close to winning. Yeah, you're um, actually like, uh, one damage on the keeper away from winning the game. Yeah, from winning the game exactly. If the key, if you had a coil, you'd win. Like mortal coil would be the one mana, one damage that Thais needs to seal it. All right, he's gonna so, go for it. Yeah, seems good. At this point, I feel like you can just play around Force of Nature Savage or, or yeah. innervate Force of Nature Savage, or, and you can pretty much win. So, I mean, there's nothing that Kibler can find, right? There's literally nothing. Yeah, just drawing, like, if that were in an Ancient of Lore, perhaps drawing Innervate into, I don't know. Yeah. In, into, into, uh, into BGH, but yeah, he has to go for this play just to survive. And, uh, Tice will be taking this series with a, either a Dark, yeah, pretty much just a Dark Bomb finish will pretty much end it. And we'll see Tice go up 3-0 against Kibler. Unfortunately for Kibler, that means he'll be dropping down to with a 2-3 record and Tice will be going up to, I believe, a 3-4 record. 3-4 record, yeah. Tice will be moving on to, I think he's 2-3, so it's going to be 3-3 three, three, actually after this match. Okay. And then Kibler is 2-3, but he's going to have a chance to play against Frezar just up next and perhaps get himself into 3-3 three, three, and equalize back with Tice. So that's going to put them both on equal footing if he wins against Frezar. But maybe, you know, Kibler brought Dragons a bit too early. I mean, even next week or this week. There is only the uh, Dragon Consort. Nothing's really coming out for Druid. There's the Volcanic Lumberer, but nothing stellar as far as dragons go. But the Hungry Dragon would be coming out next week, and that could change things for uh, a Druid deck. Yeah. Again, uh, really thanks to Kingwin for putting on this to uh, this entire tournament, uh, this entire Pro League. You can check him out. And if you enter the code KPL, you can get off 8% uh, off a lot of uh, Kingwin games, any games that you want. Um, just really great overall. We're going to be going into a short break, 10 minute break. The next game, of course, is like Daksha said, Kibler versus Frezar. So uh, I'm excited for that. And we'll be seeing that very soon.